Despite the reopening of Alabama's coastal waterways to fishing in mid-August, reminders of the oil spill remain on Dolphin Island. Fishermen are once again bringing in fresh seafood, but questions remain about the safety of their catch. There's a great deal of perception out there that the seafood, even though FDA and NOAA and state agencies have, have tested extensively and found that there, there's no contamination, the perception is among a lot of consumers that it's either tainted with oil or the dispersants have been used. The oyster industry has taken a significant hit by the oil spill. In terms of dollars, oystering contributes $1 billion to the U.S. economy, and two-thirds of what is shipped across the country comes from Gulf waters. The reefs in Alabama, damaged severely by Hurricane Katrina in 2005, will have to find a way to recover from yet another disaster. Scott Reichert researches oysters and their habitat at Auburn University's Dolphin Island-based shellfish lab. One of the key areas he studies is reef restoration. We've been doing, doing work with shellfish for, for a long time now, and I guess a lot of our research is, is even more important now that we may have some deleterious effects from the oil spill and we may need to do some restoration work. Auburn's been down here doing this kind of work for a while, uh, but now it may be even more important. Shortly after the spill began, Reichert says he realized the potential long-term impact on the shellfish industry. Before the oil washed ashore, oysters were taken from Auburn's hatchery and relocated in various areas throughout the coast. Since that time, Reichert and his colleagues have been among the few researchers with true baseline data, comparing oyster tissue samples pre- and post-spill for possible contamination. So we'll, we'll continue to collect data. You know, even though we don't see any oil out here right now, there, there's potentially still some oil in the water, maybe oil coming up from underneath. This may have some long-term impacts. So we want to continue to monitor animals uh, for the next year, two years, you know, potentially longer. The work that Auburn is doing is important for a number of reasons. One, Auburn, uh, we've got scientists down here who are helping assess the effects. And it, you need to know what the effects are before you can go forward. That's an important part of the process, being confident of what the actual impacts were. And then, of course, there's aquaculture. And then there's the idea that by providing oyster aquaculture as an option, that uh, by doing that, we think we can give folks down here along the coast another opportunity, another option to bring in some income. Bill Walton joined the Auburn faculty in 2009, and a large part of his research involves oyster farming. In this type of aquaculture, oysters are grown in bags, suspended or anchored in the waters near Bayou La Battery. As Alabama's natural reefs recover from unforeseen disasters, such as storms and spills, alternative methods of oyster growing will become important ways to augment incomes from wild-caught oysters. What we're talking about here for oyster farming is, is completely intended to complement the public fishery. And there's a reason for that. Uh, other than not wanting to hurt that fishery and the people in that fishery, the idea is, is that um, the public fishery is harvesting a lot of oysters that often go to shucking houses. Whereas the oyster farming industry, this is trying to produce those pretty oysters that you see on a plate in a fancy restaurant. And it's a, it's a premium product, it's a niche product, and it's supposed to be a high value. The long-term effects of the Gulf oil spill are impossible to predict at this point. LaDon Swan works with nine universities as director of the Mississippi-Alabama Sea Grant Consortium. He says Auburn's work on the coast will be vital to aquaculture's recovery. I mean, Auburn has been around for decades. We're not going anywhere. We'll be here when BP's gone and everyone else is gone. Auburn is committed to working with the residents down here and with the resource. And so we view this as a long-term recovery. And while we hope it is short, I mean, we're going to be prepared to deal with anything that comes up.